As you can see, we're back beside our brand new Samsung Flip. We are picking our Ireland team for the opening game against Scotland in this year's Six Nations. We're going to cycle through them. There's going to be a couple of bones of contention, you'd imagine. This is my team. If I was picking the team, this is the team I want to see start for Ireland. Just to clarify, that is very different from the team that probably should start for Ireland. I'm going with Keane Healy at number one, because you know we're going to count up the numbers, uh, because we're not true rugby men. Keane Healy, number one. Ronan Kelleher, uh, assuming he's fully fit, uh, I'd like to see him as hooker. Tyke Furlong, holding on to the three jersey. Uh, Ian Henderson and James Ryan is my ideal second row. And then my back row of Peter O'Mahony, Josh van der Fleer, boring so far, but I would give Caelan Doris the number eight jersey going into the Scotland game. Uh, at scrum half, I'd go for John Cooney. Uh, at out half, uh, it's going to be Ross Byrne, really, at this point, with all the injury concerns we have. On the wings, I've got Keith Earls and Jacob Stockdale. Gary Ringrose at outside centre because he is the best 13. Uh, we have no question about that. So I got to the number 12 jersey. The person I would give the 12 jersey to right now because, you know, I like fun things rather than the, the, the sort of perhaps the winning option uh, I'd be picking Chris Farrell I just love seeing Chris Farrell in an Ireland jersey he hasn't really let us down uh, on any occasion so far himself and Gary Ringrose this is an experiment that I want to see happen 15 it's Jordan Larmour uh, my replacements then on the bench we've got uh, Rob Herring Dave Kilcoyne Andrew Porter John Klein, I think, deserves another go in the green jersey. Uh, CJ Stander uh, coming off the bench as well alongside Conor Murray Robbie Henshaw and Will Addison I know it's a bit of a that's definitely a bench set uh, Andy Farrell wouldn't pick uh, position-wise, but uh, no out half, you'll notice there. Conor Murray uh, is the guy I would be choosing as uh, my substitute out half. So here's a team, that, here's a team that's going to beat your team, right? This is, this is the team that's going to beat Owen's team. I've got Dave Kilcoyne starting because obviously he was the four number one and really deserves his opportunity at this stage. Ronan Kelleher, again, it's fitness dependent. I'm starting with Andrew Porter because I'm going for the whole point that we're picking on form. And at the moment, Andrew Porter is just that little bit ahead of Tyke Furlong, but wait until you see my bench. James Ryan, Ian Henderson, I think Ian Henderson's pretty lucky to get into the Ireland team. Uh, definitely needs some big games for Ireland at this point and is being very pressurised by somebody who's on my bench, but not on Owen's bench. I've got Jack O'Donoghue at number six. If you're being compared to Rocky Elsom as he was by Gordon Darcy yesterday, now is the time. He's 25, it's the right, it's the right stage of his career to be putting him in the team. Josh van der Fleer at seven I think is um, probably a shoe-in at this stage. And Caelan Darcy is suddenly quite quickly becoming somebody who everybody is agreeing needs to be very close to starting this game. So it, it's really between Darcy and Stander. I haven't put Stander on my bench. Oh, I have, sorry. Cooney's nine, Ross Byrne is ten. I think at this point because of uh, fitness and form, there's not really going to be that much debate. It's a big test of Andy Farrell, I think, to see exactly how much pressure he's on to win these games if he goes with Murray to start the tournament. Now, maybe he picks Murray in the first game, he picks Cooney in the second game, and he mixes up the whole way along, and that's totally fine as well. But I just think the, the message you sent, Keith Earls back to fitness, and I think that we should not be throwing the baby out with the bathwater here. Keith Earls is one of the most dynamic, brilliant players that we have. Bundy Aki, Gary Ringrose, Stockdale, and Jordan Larmour. Who did you have, 11? I had Earls and Stockdale as well on, on the wings. Okay, so we're very similar, uh, almost exactly the same. Stockdale, again, has played his way back into form in the last couple of weeks and, uh, and gets back in at uh, 14. Ringrose at 13 is undroppable. And uh, look, at 12, you could have Henshaw, Henry or Bundyaki. They're all fit at the minute. Uh, my replacements, my Lions bench, Keane Healy, Tyke Furlong, Niall Scannell. Scannell should wear the 16 jersey, but we won't get into semantics here. Grant. Devin Toner. Devin Toner's back on the bench, and I think um, Keith Wood had a good line about him having a bit of bite, a little bit of nastiness at the moment, and that's exactly what this Ireland team needs, and there's no way that I'm throwing him out at the moment. I've got a 6-2 split, because I think at the minute that's kind of what we need, and it gives, us, it gives the opportunity against Scotland, if things aren't going well, to roll on Peter O'Mahony, CJ Stander, and Keane Healy and Tyke Furlong at the same time, and you're looking over the bench going, oh, Jesus, look at this. I think that would be pretty amazing. We've got Conor Murray at uh, 22 and Andrew Conway at 23. I think Conway could probably be starting. And I think he's, he's pushing. There's no way I'd not have him in my 23, irrespective of how well uh, Will Addison's playing. A 6-2 split. Do you want to sing the South African national anthem while you're at it as well? This is uh, an absolute disgrace on Irish rugby that you would suggest such a thing. A couple of interesting things there, like uh, I'm not sure where you want to start. We want, might start with the backs because we're fairly similar except for midfield. A bit too similar, yeah. So this is, so I, 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 I want to see Chris Farrell play as many games as possible. I admit, I hold my hands up and say it's probably not going to happen. 
But what could possibly happen, and I think it's been floated in the mail this morning by Hugh Farley, is that this weekend, for example, uh, in the Red of Munster, you could have a situation where Rory Scannell moves into out half, and then you've got this hole at 12. Now, Chris Farrell, we haven't seen play 12 too often in Ireland, but he has played there for Grenoble in the past. He has been speaking about playing at 12 in the past and says he greatly enjoys it. And it's something we haven't seen too often. I would just like to see him play 12 at, at some stage for Munster and then perhaps make this a concrete case. I'll completely say this is a fanciful idea. I don't think it's of, a fanciful of, of, at all. Of him at inside centre. I don't think so. But imagine how much is fun it would be. Is that where he started with Ireland? Was it, in the Six Nations? In the West, Wales ago. game? Yeah, I thought, I thought that's what... Or, or when we were so uh, injury... Uh, Ravaged uh, in midfield, potentially. I like. I would love to see a, a midfield of, of Farrell and Ringrose at some stage. And you know what? Maybe Scotland is the perfect opportunity for that to happen. Like maybe it isn't a, a summer test or a November test. I think Andrew Conway has to be in the conversation for selection. It's true, and maybe. And you might even have him ahead of Earls at this point, given the form that he's shown. And Earls is just coming back from injury, so Earls hasn't got quite back up to that level yet. But like we we know from Brian O'Driscoll sitting here in studio telling us that of all the trainers that they have, Keith Earls trains the house down and, you know, you pick on form and you pick on training and I suspect at international level there's always, always the inclination to go with the form and training because that's what they're doing for you. Mm. The bit where they're playing well in matches is outside the environment. When they're inside the environment, it's how do you do? And so if Keith Earls is like a, a legendary trainer and has obviously had a, an amazing Ireland career, has always been even in defeat, has been frequently someone who puts his hand up and says, well, I did my bit. Yeah. I, I got yards, I made tackles, I, I, ta I made a try-saving tackle. Um, Conway came back from the World Cup with his reputation enhanced, one of the few people yeah. to do so. Yeah. So it, it definitely strengthens his case as well. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm going with Addison basically on the form he's shown over the past few weeks. Some people might make the case that he's a better fit than Jordan Larmer to start at 15 for Ireland. I disagree with that because I think Jordan Larmer is an absolute wizard. Like, you talk about the different combinations in the back three. It, like, if things aren't going well in a match, do you automatically go to a substitution or do you say to yourself, let's try Stockdale out of 15 and let's uh, shift Larmer to the wing and see what happens uh, for us and then perhaps have Addison as, as your wing option? I wouldn't necessarily be reaching for a Conway or an Addison from the bench immediately. Wouldn't mind. Kind that's of like. Why, my, that's why I'm having a 6 2 split. I don't like. Uh, Unless, okay, that's a good point. Unless yeah. there's an injury, right? But I, I actually, I, I, I think that this is something that we should be experimenting with, right? This is happening at various stages in world rugby, and generally with South African coaches, fair enough. But actually, like, my bench is amazing. It's an amazing bench. You have CJ Stander, Peter Manny, Devon Toner, Niles Scannell, Ty Furlong, and Keen Healy. Between the 47th minute and the 60th minute, you're rolling that bench out? Yeah. You're kicking the shit out of anybody in that last 25 minutes. Let me ask you a question then, because it's a question I asked myself picking my team. Is CJ Stander slash Peter Mahoney here uh, a better option off the bench when so you need somebody eager than Max Deegan? Like, uh, I, I'll put Reese Ruddock into that. Like, I'm talking about proven Irish international, Reese Ruddock in that CJ, yeah, Peter Mahoney bracket as well. I, yeah. Like, is Max Deegan actually the perfect impact sub at this point in his career? I think that, um, I, 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 look, Probably there's a the, there there might be some data that suggests that you get better if you're introduced as a sub over a period of time and you know you know but actually I think that with all those young guys start them give them 50 minutes tell them we really trust you and we're not going to take you off after your first mistake if you come on as a sub bloods up you Trevor Brennan a little bit take the head off somebody in your first tackle it's like ooh penalty given away all of a sudden, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just easier to start a game. You're into the rhythm of exactly knowing what your responsibilities are and cycle through these players. So I don't think we should have a fixed back row at the start of the Six Nations or at the end of the Six Nations, given how many back rowers we have. All of them should feel like they're in with a chance of being first choice over the next couple of years. What's the point in saying, well, we have these three and there are three and that's not moving. There's no point in that, it turns out. We have too many of them. So let's see what the combinations are. Let's work through until you get to a point where three of them are like, I am a good, as good an option as there is in this hemisphere, and so you have to pick me week in, week out. Mm. Possibly. Like, I think also as well, the reason why I settled on absolutely keeping CJ Sander in the bench rather than at Max Deegan is because uh, it's CJ Sander. Like, we, we, we can't just uh, put a, an age over his head and say, because uh, you're probably not going to improve anymore in your career, therefore we have to have the, the upshoot guy. At this moment in time, of course you'd be picking CJ Sander over Max Deegan. Like, it was actually a big leap, big-ish leap on my part, actually, 
put Doris in there ahead of uh, CJ Sandler at, at this point. But I think given the new era that is dawning for Ireland, I think it's a necessary step to actually change things up a little bit. Yeah, I also think that it would be good for us to get away from the whole, uh, you're the starter and you're nailed on and never ever will you not be a sub, which is kind of what we had under Joe Schmidt. There was like, there were starters and there were subs. There wasn't, we didn't have that whole sense of this being a... a the finishers. Yeah, that, we didn't have that. We didn't really have that, did we? You I, never got the sense not. that, like... It definitely felt like a... The, you if were, you weren't in the starting team, you were dropped. You definitely felt like and a And you were either dropped from the team so. to the replacements or you were gone. Whereas what I'm saying is, like, why, why do we have to have that? Like, you know, like, in both these teams, in both these teams, you would have your captain on the field at the start of the game in the second row and he would finish the game irrespective of whether or not Peter Marty came on. Is James Ryan your captain the whole way through? Yeah, I'd be picking James Ryan as my captain. So I'd be picking CJ Standard as my captain, but he's on the bench, and I'm, he takes the captaincy off James Ryan when he comes on. So, so of all the players that you've started, James Ryan, like, I can see that. Like, who, who, who else? Like, the, the other contenders are Sexton, O'Mahony, and that's really... Like, you, Henshaw, you, you started Henshaw on your team? Oh, no, no, Henshaw's no. not in your squad. No. Why not? It's, it's Henshaw slash Conway on the bench. Who, who's, whoever's fit and whoever's... Whoever's shown to me that week. Mm. You see, like, I, I, then I'd probably have Henshaw at 12. It, it's it Henshaw or Bundy. It's Henshaw and Ringrose, like Andy Farrell is going to pick. Yeah, and I, I have absolutely no problem with that. Like, if Henshaw is fully fit and is back to his best, he's like one of our best players. Could go for Bundy as well, though, couldn't he? Like, def definitely wouldn't be ruling him out of the, the equation there. So, I don't know. I, I just love a uh, little bit of Chris Farrell. I, I what think do you think he's going to pick? I think he's going to pick Healy, Scannell, Furlong. Ryan Henderson. Ryan Henderson. Josh Van de Fleer for sure. Yeah. And th then, then you've got... Peter captain. And eight. Eight, I'm not sure he's going to go for Sander over Doris. And then I think he's going to go Cooney. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to go Cooney and he's going to go Ross Byrne because I think that's what the option is. I don't think it's going to be... Yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. And then after that... The back three are locked down, I think, at this point. I think it is going to be Earl Stockdale and Larmer. Because of what because of what Larmer showed so it's not, in the it's, Ireland jersey it's not, during the World there's Cup, there's no there's no change, it's there's really, no significant change in that team, and that's why we this morning picked the teams we would like to see because we're, it's not what we think is going to happen because I think it's largely predictable actually. Cooney and Doris are new, if he picks them. If he picks them, and, and like, here's the thing: is it fair for both of them to have new players that they're working with in their on their debuts? You know, should should Caelan Doris when he starts and he's at the base of the scrum? have a lion scrum half picking the ball off him? Or should he have a guy who's like, ooh, this is my first proper opportunity here too? Well, I was more thinking uh, six and seven, to be quite honest with you, and that's why I went for Peter O'Mahony and Josh van der Fleer, that his back row partners are established Irish internationals. Yeah, look, I'd, I mean, you just want to see a little bit of... Uh, you, want, you want him to be free to go and say, look, this is going to be my team. I'm, I have a, a long-term contract. I don't really care about whether or not we lose this game. If it turns out, what we unearth is an amazing partnership here and here and here, and we start to get our philosophy out. Can't do that though, can you? you no. Gotta, you gotta be Scotland at home. All right, and also, it's putting the foot down and saying, this is gonna be my philosophy in your first Ireland cap is uh, quite a ballsy thing to do. 8.37 a.m. this morning, you can give us your reaction to our Ireland teams. Pick your own, use the hashtag OTBAM. Um, as ever, you can get in touch with us by dropping a comment on uh, the YouTube stream or indeed on the Facebook stream where we broadcast live every morning from 7.30 here on Ireland's only sports breakfast show. Uh, you're watching OTBAM, the sports breakfast show from Off the Ball. Sports News next with Tom Malone, but here's some more of Jack McCaffrey on Off the Ball. He is not happy with the advance mark.